people do. Holy Hannah, this is huge. Karen probably has evidence. Have a listen to the Vanity Fair reporter who interviewed her. Karen Reed's murder trial captivated much of Massachusetts and the internet. I'm Julie Miller. I spent three days with Karen Reed shortly after her trial ended with a hung jury. And these are some of the most shocking things I learned about her and her case. Shortly after O'Keefe's death, she went to his house where John's family also was. Karen claims that when she asked John's family, you know, how did he look? What did he look like? She claims that John's brother, Paul, said, he looked like he went five rounds with Mike Tyson. Almost immediately after, John's mom said, according to Karen, I think that he looks like he got hit by a car. John's family denies that that exchange happened the way that Karen explains it. But Karen says that after that alleged conversation, that is the moment she realized she was viewed as a suspect. Since John O'Keefe's murder, Karen's gone to pretty extreme lengths to prove her innocence. The Albert family sold their house in 2023. A source close to Albert told me that that had nothing to do with the case. That was because the house was simply too big for the family since their children were grown. But once the house was sold, Karen's detective was able to get a hold of all the carpeting that the new owners were getting rid of that had been in the house when the Alberts owned it. Since then, she's been paying for a temperature controlled storage unit to store this rug, this carpeting, in the hopes that she can one day swab it for DNA or for blood. I asked her what that would cost. She said that it's about $5,000 per swab and she has no idea where on that carpet John's DNA might be. So at this point, everything is a game of calculus in terms of where she puts her expenses. So the only thing holding her back from testing the carpet is money. $5,000 per swab. And who's trying to get all her money right now? Not pointing any fingers, but it seems like some people might have a motivation. Have a listen to Paul O'Keefe one more time. We figured it out as soon as she left the house that day when she came over. We didn't talk to any investigators, state police, nobody. You know, my mother had said, do you think she has something to do with this? And I said, we're not going to think like that. He's only disputing when that conversation took place. He's not disputing that they immediately knew that Karen had run John down with her car. We also know from witness testimony that sneaky snake Jen McCabe was whispering in Peggy's ear that morning before Karen even got back from the hospital. Things are coming apart at the seams, aren't they? And that's not all. Listen to this part. Another critical point of contention in the case has been a Google search that Jennifer McCabe, Brian Albert's sister-in-law, did the morning of John O'Keefe's death. Karen's expert found that she had Google searched Haas long to die in cold at 2.27 a.m. The timestamp is incredibly important because 2.27 a.m. would indicate that she knew John's body was out in the lawn at Albert's home. The Commonwealth had several experts testifying though that the timestamp didn't actually indicate the time of the search. She could have opened the tab to search at 2.27, but she didn't search until after 6 a.m. as she says happened. I was able to find a forensic computer experts to look at the information that the prosecution's experts and Reed's expert had gathered. He came to his own independent conclusion saying that the search did happen at 2.27 a.m. God, I love a reporter that does their due diligence. I was waiting for part two to come out so that I could do a reading on both parts one and two together. But if you can't wait and you just want to read it yourself, the link is in the description to part one. In the meantime, stay happy, folks. In addition to talking to Karen, I also spoke to her family, her friends. I spoke to a juror on the trial. If you want to read more from my reports, go to VanityFair.com.